We're doing oil filters this morning. Dibs, come on. Y'all don't make fun of my handwriting, okay? Let's see. Is today the fifth? Yes. Uh oh. Oh my gosh, my handwriting's terrible. <laughs> Who gave me this paint marker? So every single year, we change the oil in this gearbox. So I think we're gonna get to that today. <laughs> Boy, that's nice. Is that Start out with about 20 and I'll check it. So we ended up being 48 pumps? Mm -hmm. So we were putting new gear case oil um, in the headers, but we ran out of oil, so our next project um, is going to be the grain cart. I'm gonna take the 8320R and go hook up to the three point hitch uh, that goes on the grain cart when we load it onto the trailer. We're going to back it up in the shop and uh, check wheel bearings and some other stuff. So, are you ready, Dibs? Are you ready? That's the best thing ever. <laughs> So if anyone is familiar with a grain cart, um, everyone knows that you cannot see around this thing, um, especially when backing up. Matter of fact, when we get a new grain cart driver, our very first rule of anything for my dad is do not back up in the grain cart unless you 100% have to. Uh, we don't have cameras on our grain cart, so I think Cody or dad will be guiding me back up into the shop. Uh, that way I don't hit anything because I can't see around this thing. My mirrors don't get you know wide enough so I can see around this thing. So, but anyways, Cody and Dad are gonna back me up. So since it's on the three point right now, I can let the nose down like that which brings the back of the cart up and we're putting stands on the back um, and then lifting them up and then I'm going to pick up the cart like this and it'll basically set that back of the cart up on the stands and now the tires are off the ground which is pretty dark in there I don't know if you can see that or not we got stands up here for support if that gives out it's still on the tractor and then We got them right here on both sides. Wiggle it. <laughs> yeah. That is. That's all pivoting. <laughs> Bangs are good. I don't feel no slack in them. <laughs> well. Tad bit. Good bit.
And you'll shake the top of that and see if that took the slack out. Go ahead and go ahead and turn it. Well, everything checks out on the green cart. Wheel bearings are checked, lighting is checked, pivoting system is checked. We are going to pull out here and hook the green cart up and uh, get that auger down a little bit. Uh, that way we can check the gear case oil on it. And then uh, after a gear case oil, all this thing is needed for is a bath. I think this is the uh, last thing that we have to wrench on until we uh, run this. And then find how many bolts and nuts that we left inside that are gonna go all the way through. Which has happened before. Are you ready for this crazy transition? Mm -hmm. Yep. Probably one of the best feelings ever is when you just have the combine all tore apart and then you put it back together and it's running again. It's a very wholesome, good feeling. But nothing is falling apart. We've had it running for probably 15 minutes or so. I say nothing has been falling apart, but we did have to lift up the center drum there because the new belt that we put on in the center canvas was too thick. And the fingers on the drum right here were actually touching it, so we had to lift that up probably a quarter inch to half inch or so. But uh, after doing that, that's pretty much the only thing that has gone wrong. So, super blessed for that. So, this morning Cody and I went back to Coleman to pick up some more parts. Uh, we were expecting belts, um, but the fountain auger tube for my combine came in. So uh, we get to do that. Also yesterday, I don't know if you can tell or not, but mom's draper belt was turning extremely slow and we're kind of confused on why it's turning so slow. So uh, this morning we are going to be putting that two back in um, and looking at mom's header. Uh, we're thinking more of a relief valve um, for the header, mom's header, 
but we really don't know. It's either the relief valve or we have a bad brand new motor from MacDon. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what we're about to find. Um, I just know that we're going to start tearing into some stuff and, uh, you know, see if it gets us somewhere. This is not making a mess at all. Uh-uh. I did not see what I was hoping to see. So this is your relief valve right here. This is number two. And then the one back up in there that we just took out, that's number one. But uh, we were hoping for a blowed O-ring or something. I don't see the obvious. You're hoping for chunks or yeah, something. Maybe a blowed O-ring. I was hoping this O-ring was blowed. So we tighten this relief valve down and uh, we're gonna see what that did. So mom's gonna kick it on and uh, we're gonna see how fast it spins now. I don't know if it was the grace of God that fixed it or if messing with that relief valve fixed it, but it's running normal speed, which is about 80 RPM. I held out a stopwatch and then counted the rotations and it came out to be about 80 RPM. So if you would like to run your header and count how many times it goes around and time it and then get the RPM and comment down below, that'd be awesome. But uh, this header is spinning about 80 RPM. I don't know what normal is, but it looks semi-normal. So I think we're going to go set this header on the trailer. And uh, I guess the next thing would be giving it a bath and maybe a little bit of grease. And uh, this header is ready for harvest. shiny, overpriced, green paint. Don't drop this. Okay. Usually this paint mode, if you grab your freaking bearing, will just fall off. You know, I think we just about got the use out of that one. Is all that the seal or is that shims? I don't have no shims on it, does it, Chris? I don't think so. This fountain has a gear. Sit that off By the, the way, sand. we knew this bearing was out. Good as new. Who is that? No! Oh gosh. Dibs, he'll bark at a butterfly. Today is Monday, April 8th, which is also the day of the solar eclipse. So, um, I'm planning on, you know, trying to get some footage of that for y'all. Uh, maybe, you know, if you didn't drive halfway across the United States to go look at it, which I understand, you know, I can at least, you know, try to share it with you. So where we're at in Central Texas, it's not going to be fully over us. It's going to be like 98%, which is good enough. I'm not going to drive 30 miles south so I can see it, you know. Um, I'm just going to walk out, you know, by the combines and uh, try to record it for y'all. Um, I do have a bigger lens. Um, it is a 70 to 200. It's not going to be great um, for catching the eclipse, but I think it'll be better than, you know, the lens that I'm recording on right now. So um, I am planning to do that. Um, 
I will have to switch over cameras because I need this camera that I'm recording this on um, on my big lens because it's a Sony camera and this is the only Sony camera that I have. If y'all want to see more mechanicing stuff, um, here for a little bit of this video is going to be solar eclipse related. So I'm going to put a timestamp, you know, somewhere on the screen for when we pick back up on, you know, repairing the equipment. But if you want to see the solar eclipse, um, stay tuned because we're about to go see it. Well, this is what we have working with here. This is a 70 to 200. Watch, a 70 to 200 is really not enough for the solar eclipse. Um, you need more of like a, a 500 millimeter or maybe like a thousand millimeter um, to really, you know, I guess see the sun. But this is all I have, so we're gonna have to make it work. So the eclipse is supposed to start in like five minutes. And uh, I got my camera right here with a lens. And I also have a welding helmet because I don't have the equipment that goes in front of your camera so you don't burn up the sensor. I'm gonna point the camera at the sun and then hold the welding helmet in front of it and uh, hope for the best. Okay, so I have a rag over it because it's pointed directly at the sun and I don't want it to burn a hole in my sensor. But uh, we have that set up. Um, and then, I don't know if, if I can show y'all. See, it doesn't zoom in that much. I guess I can zoom and show y'all. Let me crank this down. I'm going the wrong direction. Bear with me. Hold on. You're going to be able to see it way better um, on that other camera. But that's what it's looking like right now. That's through the welding helmet right here. I think it's really blurry. But you can see the moon has started. There's a little bitty notch out of the right side right now. That's pretty cool. It says for us that it is going to be a 99.67% coverage um, where I'm at. So, yeah. And it is going to happen at 1.37 and it is 12.39 right now. So, we still have an hour before it is completely dark here. Um, but, I'll tune back in when it's about halfway um, and then I'll tune in again when it's either really dark or completely dark, one or the other. So we're about halfway, I would say, maybe a little less than halfway, but we're getting there. So I just found out that if you take a strainer during the eclipse, um, the shadows are supposed to look really weird. So right now, I guess I'm gonna turn on this camera and give y'all what the view is on the moon and sun right now. So here is what the sun looks like right now with the amount of the moon that's in front of it. Um, just keep that in mind. If you come over here and get a strainer, and we're looking at the shadows here. Don't look at my strainer. If you look at the shadows, they're half moons right now. So I guess that's one way that you can see, or tell, I should say, um, how much the moon is going over the sun. So that's pretty cool. I'm sure the camera can't pick it up, but it looks super cloudy outside. Like, it looks like I'm wearing sunshades, but I'm not wearing sunshades. I don't know how to explain it. It's like it's cloudy, but it's not cloudy. It's perfectly clear outside. That is so weird. It's just, it's just almost closed, I guess. Look at the shadows, they're moons. Like half moons. Ah, uh, hey. Huh. So that's what the deal looks like right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's weird looking. I know, it's like it's cloudy outside, but it's not. Yeah. It's so like hazy looking. That looks so cool. It is almost fully covered. That looks so freaking cool. Like it's so dark outside that the automatic light on the shop came on it's just super weird out here like it's daylight but it's not at the same time I'm trying to record with a 200 millimeter lens is kind of hard too but it just looks so weird it looks like I'm wearing a really dark pair of sunshades 
So that's what it looks like right now. The moon is coming back over the sun. You can see a star right there. A star? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. It is, I said you'd see him. That's the evening Look, star. There's one. That's right there. Shadows over here. One star. Look to the west. You can see all that cloud bank. Yeah. Look at that. Well, we survived the solar eclipse. I guess the world didn't end after all. So, that means I get to yank the header off and uh, we're gonna go change some fuel filters, fuel filters, and uh, change the oil. But first, I have to unhook the header and uh, get it back on the trailer um, before we do all of that. Okay, let the oil rain. What's Hadley doing? So, believe it or not, if you do open that valve, it will drain the oil. And if you start pouring oil back in it without closing that valve, it'll keep on going out. Don't ask me how I know. Well, I didn't record it, but Cody changed that filter, which is the oil filter. Um, we swapped out these two fuel filters. And then down here by the tire, I guess I'll just walk down there. Dad took this filter off and uh, cleaned the bottom of that because this always gets gunk all up in there. Also with the filter up there with the clear bottom, uh, we took that out. There was also gunk in that. So anyways, we got filters changed. Um, Napa should be here in a couple of minutes with our oil. We ordered oil for the combine, well, both combines and the tractor, um, and we'll get to change all of that. So I guess we're just waiting on oil right now. So before all the John Deere oil guys start commenting, uh, we've been running Rotella and literally everything for years. So you can stop typing on your keyboards. It's all right. Little over. Little over? The filter will fill. So. That's okay. So we need to go turn the key on but not start it so it fills up all those filters. Yeah. So when you turn the key on, it engages your fuel pump and uh, basically fills up all the filters. If I started it right now, it would either run for a little bit and then die, or it just wouldn't start at all. So uh, if you kick on the key, it's filling up those filters right now, and then it'll be full, and then I can start it. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Typical John Deere. Parking brake unengaged and first gear. Try to move forward. Come on. <sighs> Haven't even started the season. Gotta do a John Deere restart. You know? You gotta love them, right? So, we're finished with my combine. Um, the only thing left for this combine before it needs a bath is all the engine belts up in the engine bay. Um, and that's really it. But anyways, uh, we're gonna go do the exact same thing to mom's combine. We're going to change fuel filters and change our oil, but y'all just saw us do this one, so we're gonna do the exact same thing to mom's. Um, and then after mom's combine, uh, we will do the tractor. So I'll see y'all whenever we do the tractor. 
Let's see if you can uh, pull it out before it, <laughs> it gets on you. Oh, I already have some on it. Without dropping it either. Yeah. Oh, dang! <laughs> Professional. Oh, my goodness. I'm a terrible video person. I forgot to video us putting oil in the tractor. But, oil change is done. Now we gotta do a fill filters. Fuel filter. Why can't I say that? Fuel filters. <laughs> make sure it's tight because you can't really. <laughs> I, know, I never catch the funny moments on camera. <laughs> Cody, he was turned around and then turned on really quick and tried to tighten that one again like he's going to catch it off guard. <laughs> So, we just got an alert on our phone that they are calling for two to four inch hail today, which in April is our thunderstorm season, so there's a hailstorm or tornado pretty regularly in April, so I'm not really surprised, it's just kind of disappointing. Well, it didn't hail last night, which is good, I'll take that any day. I did delay ending the video just in case it did hail, but it didn't hail. It's supposed to rain all day today. Since it is going to rain all day, um, we're not going to be doing anything outside um, for the combines. But we do have a project going on inside of the shop um, that's pretty interesting. That'll be its own video. So, this is the end of this video. But the next video that's going to be coming out um, is going to be that video. So we're going to pick up right here where I'm at right now in the next video. But that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of more maintenance on the combines as well as the solar eclipse. I think they said that the next solar eclipse that will happen in the United States, I will be 75 years old. So, um, maybe I'll still be doing YouTube. <laughs> I, I really don't know. 75 years old. That's, that's a long ways away. But... Um, at least I will have, you know, the solar eclipse when I was 20 years old, um, in my back pocket to show, you know, friends and family, you know, later down the road. So I think that's pretty cool. But I hope you all enjoyed that. And this is going to be it for today's video. Thank y'all for watching and I will see y'all in the next one.